Hey, and welcome to our new video. Today, we want to make an effect with the simulation nodes inside of the geometry node system. And it looks like this. And without further ado, let's hop into the newest simulation branch because it's not in the master yet. So we have to use a special version of Blender. You can find it if you go on the blender.org website and you can click here on downloads and then you can scroll down and click on experimental. Then you are on the experimental page and here we want to go to branch and we want to download the newest geometry nodes simulation branch. Now, if you don't see it here, you may click on all achieved builds and then you can search it here and maybe it will be further down the line, maybe here. And you can find it somewhere in this list. Now, if you downloaded it, we can open it if you extract all the files and then you can click on blender.exe or depends on which oper operating system you are. And now inside of Blender, we want to delete, of course, everything as always. And we want to add in our cube again. Now, this is completely unrelevant because we want to drag our window up here and we want to change it to our geometry nodes editor. Of course, we want to add a new node tree in here and I'll close this panel here because we don't need it with the N key. We have something new in this branch and this is if we add nodes with shift and A, you can use this little shortcut shift and A or you can add nodes here on the top by clicking this add. And we have now the simulation menu and here we have the simulation output and input. Here it says add this output first and this prevents you from crashing because as said, this isn't, this isn't in master. So it's a little bit buggy and glitchy. So you have to add our output first and after that the input and this should work. So keep saving all the time and bear with me. So what can we do with our simulation system? As I said in some tutorials before, this, you can imagine it like a loop. For this, we can use our little timeline here. And, and here we have our time of our scene. Now, if we use, for instance, in set position node, and we want to change the position a little bit on the Z axis 0.1, then what does this thing do? If we hit play, it goes up. Why is it? Because you can imagine this being a loop and on our first frame, our cube gets pulled up on the Z axis by one point, uh, 0 0.1 meters. After that, our result gets cached on the output and on frame two, our result of the simulation output, which is the cube being pushed up by 0 0.1, gets imported into the input and gets pushed up by 0 0.1 again. So you can imagine it like a loop. And I think this is as simple of an explanation as I can give you. And let's start with our tutorial. So for this, we need the set position node anyways. So let's reset it. But before, we don't want to use our cube. So let's cut this wire with holding control and the left mouse button. With that, you can delete wires or cut them. And we want to use a, a grid. So I just search it, a grid. And let's plug it in here. So you can't see your viewport updating. So you have to scrub your timeline a little bit. <laughs> As said, it's a little bit glitchy, but you can achieve extremely cool things with it. 
So let's see. Now we want to use our grid as the emitter and it should emit a bunch of points. How can we create points by distributing some? So let's go into the point menu and we want to distribute points on our faces. Now to see a result, let's scrub a little bit again. And of course we want to have a lot more. So maybe a thousand like this. And they should be maybe a little bit smaller. So let's go after our simulation here. And we want to use the point radius, set point radius node. And let's set this a little bit smaller like this or even so you can barely see them but we will get a tons tons of them afterwards so now nothing happens as you can see and this is because we have nothing in our simulation output besides of the set position node but it has but it hasn't parameters to change something so now we want to use a join geometry node and we want to join our points after our simulation input. Now, what does this do? This basically means that we join on each iteration new points in here. Now, you can see something if we hit play, but if we would change the position a little bit of our points, then you can see we will get new points spawned in here like this. Now, this is maybe a little bit too strong. So maybe let's set another zero before. So here you can see, so on every iteration, it spawns points offsets the points before. So the iteration before by 0 0.01 meters on the Z axis. Now, we don't want to have this kind of effect, even though it's cool. We want to have another effect. How can we do this? For this, we can first of all, delete our offset here. And we want to use a Voronoi texture like this with the position plugged into the offset. Now, this should look something like this. So it's a little bit strong. So let's take a vector math node and let's set it to scale to take the strength way down, maybe 0.02. Now we can see a really cool effect. So let's take the scale way up. So we get more of a randomization like this. And but now you can see they get faster and faster. So we want to plug in a sign function in between like this. And now we should get a really cool effect. Yes. So now we have our flower effect. So they join in here in the end. Oh, this is really cool. But now we want to have our lines a little bit randomized. How can we do this? We can add a position to our Voronoi texture. So let's first of all take our position and plug this into the vector. Now that doesn't change anything, but we want to add a little bit of time and randomness, randomness to our position. So let's take a random value node like this and set it to vector. Now we want to change the minimum to minus one and let's plug it into the add. Now let's see what it looks like. Now this is cool, but a little bit too strong as you can see. But if you want to have this kind of effect, of course, you can do whatever you want. It's procedural. So you have no boundaries. We can use here another scale function. So we want to change the strength of our random value node, depending on our scene time node. And we want to use the seconds for the scale. Now, 
this is way too strong. But if you want to use this effect, as said, it's all your artwork. But I want to have it way slower. So I'll take a math node. And I want to multiply it by 0 0.0 and 3. So now we can see we get an effect like this. But now I want to also make more strings. So I'll higher up our point count. And now this should be the geometry nodes thing. So now for shading, we of course only can use cycles because it supports our point clouds. And we can have a look at it. I mean, as you can see, it is very small. But we want to use an emissive material. So let's create one, call it AMI. And let's go into our geometry nodes editor and let's use our material where is it material and set material and we want to use our emissive material now we can see a different now we can see a different and that's a difference and that's because we have to make our emission on our material and now we have a pretty cool flower but we want to have a color shift depending on the age of our, I call it now particles. I mean, they're not really particles, but let's call it of our points. Let's call them points. And how can we do this? Now, we can make an attribute, a capture attribute in our loop or simulation. And we can pull this attribute over and over again. Let's make this an integer and not capture attribute. I mean a store named attribute, an integer, and let's call it h for the h of our points. And let's call it again. And now it will always be the same now it will always be the same number, I guess one. But if we use a math node and always add one, then on every frame one gets added because we are in our simulation. And we can use this in our geometry nodes, in our shading. So we can go into our shader editor. And here we can use an attribute and we can pull our h attribute and we can't see it. And this is because we first of all have to output it. So let's use our h output here and let's output it through the group output and we can call it h. And now we should see it in here. Yes. So press play again. Let's wait till it is nearly on the end. And now we can grab our map range node. And from min is 200. And with this, we can use our color ramp. And we can color our simulation with this. So let's make the inner part orange and the outer part blue. Now we can see that's way too less. So let's take 500. And now we can see we can see our result. Now it's a little bit slow because I'm recording my screen right now, but it should be faster on your engine. Now we can take down our background and here you can see it. Now you can of course take your strength up. And if you want to be really experimental, 
you can also turn on our viewport comp compositor and let's go into the compositing and we want to use our notes and now we want to use the glare node and let's use the fog glow and i know this isn't supported right now so let's take the blur and let's blur this a little bit and we want to add this back in then like this and now we have a little bit of glow and we can use this this is cool so i think this will be the tutorial little side note we are currently planning the next 1.3 update of my big material pack and we are searching for great videos or scenes where somebody used the materials from this material pack for our next feature real video of the 1.3 update so if you want to make a cool scene or a great video that shows a bunch of materials then you can get you can get in touch with me the email is here on the screen and you can just text me and yes the the theme of the next update will will be luxurious and yes the more videos we have the better and of course and of course all people will be will be named in the description of the feature real video and thanks to all that want to participate in our next project and of course if you want to make a great scene for our next feature reel of the material pack you can get the 1.3 version uh, basically today from me for free so you can work with it if that doesn't sound like a great deal and yes thank you all for watching and see you again hopefully bye